guys. Okay. Sorry about the awkward camera angle on this, but I just learned how to do this and it is super fun. So I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. I'm going to give it another shot. I've already been playing around with this a lot. So I saw this tutorial on how to make this. And then I had to kind of adjust it because apparently the size of the rings is super important. Which they don't really emphasize in the video. So I'm like, ah! So, yeah. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. So then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I bet I could multiply this pattern and do it even bigger. And then I realized other people have already done this, so it's not unique, but <laughs> it's a fun technique um, that uh, is pretty interesting. This one is uh, five, and once again, the size of the rings is important, so if you want it like super sturdy like this, you got to fine tune the size of the rings you're using. Um, I just sort of, I'm working with a bunch of different sizes of jump rings and stuff, so uh I gotta kind of work with what I got, but I love this especially because I can, uh, I can put something in the middle. Um, oh, I don't have any beads right here, but you put a little bead thing in the center, and suddenly you have a little flower. So, anyway, but that's the goal. So let me show you how I make that. This is fun. Okay, so this is a five-petal flower. And really, this pattern will make a five petal or a four petal. Um, but if you go larger than a five petal, you're going to start running into really loose middle. So um, this one is already going to sag a little bit if I just hung it like that. So I would have to do something fun in the middle, which I'm totally willing to do. This one is so tight that it's really difficult to get together. I don't know. It, it's all, it all varies. It's all fun. And so I already opened the, the larger rings for my five petals. I'm going to start with one and I'm going to put four on it. Um, that one is going to not be my, it's going to be one in from the side, but don't worry about that for right now. And also I'm going to do my bottom row and then I'm going to add the top row. It just makes it easier that way. So I close my jump ring. And I probably should fast forward this part. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's also really important to get the jump rings closed perfectly, which sounds like weird and obsessive, but it's not, I promise. It is so much harder to go back than it is just to get it right the first time. So these started out closed, so I'm putting three more. You can't really see that, can you? I'm putting three more on this. And the idea is that every petal will have four of these. So I'm adding three because it's already got one because it's sharing one with this one. So, um, okay, closing carefully. I actually have a different pair of pliers. Sorry, there we go, sorry, went off camera. Maybe I should adjust this a little bit. Oh, now I'm wobbling. That's not good either. My goodness complicated. All right, then we take our next one right here and we loop it on the edge one. So now you can see it's kind of making this like little chain right here. It is important that everyone you're doing is, you know, going on the, the loop. The extra loops are going on the bottom or the extra jump rings are going on the bottom, not on the top or in the middle or whatever. But I don't, that doesn't actually mean anything. What is a middle? <laughs> okay, come on. There we go. Two. Three gives me four. And then close the ring. And notice you gotta get these really, really tight. Last one. Hi, future me here. No, do not put four rings on the end ring. 
put three. Honestly, I am such a goose. Sorry about that. So now I've got three on the end, and if you notice, it kind of turns into this whole like little chain thing right there, where they're all on the bottom. So, okay, there, now you can see. Okay, so that's four. So last one is a little bit odd, same as the others. I go in through there, and then I put the two on the bottom, but then I don't put the one on the side. So, now is where it gets a little fun. So I've got everything laying out, and then, oh wait, no, it doesn't get fun yet. It's still boring. Okay, now I have to go and I thread all of these through. So I'm basically just duplicating it so there's two rings instead of one ring right there. Um, and I do this after the fact because you gotta close them all separately anyway. And everything is already set up if I do it now. And I don't have to, you know, get everything in the right position. It's already in the position. I just copy what's already on there and it's good to go. See? Simple. Also, I'm working with opening the large rings instead of the small ones. I just leave those closed because it is a pain to open and close those little bitty rings and the large ones are much easier to open and close. I would rather do as little opening and closing of the little bitty rings as I possibly can. Okay. Two more. decide if I should fast forward through this or leave it boring, but you get the picture. Um, if that, this is all, the whole thing is actually really fast, you know, it's not, uh, it's not as arduous as I had, well, okay, the first time I did it, it took me forever, and then I had to make an extra trip to the store, and it was, it was a nightmare, but... After you work out your ring sizes, it all works out. No, but seriously, the ring size thing is a very big deal. Um, because, especially if you're making the smaller with the forward pedal one. So now I have this thing right here, right? Except for the one little thing on the side. And take this one off. So this is opening and closing a little ring. See? I think the proof is I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, sorry, you didn't really want to know that if you're watching an instructional video, did you? Okay, so then, and this is the fun part, you take, no, it's not the fun part yet. Oh my gosh, I keep, I keep telling you it's the fun part, and then I'm lying. So now I gotta open all these real fast, really fast. I need 10 of these and hopefully I have enough. Okay, so these are getting threaded. So you see these two little guys right here, or four little guys, whatever, however many rings I shot. That's a lot of rings. Okay, so, well, I'll just show you and then I'll pause. Okay. One. And really, I'm doing the same thing here that I was doing on, ah, on the first row where I put the groups on. One set, and then I'm going to put a second one through the exact same spot. So, but first, I'm going to link everything together, which makes it much easier to do.
All right, did I get all of the obsidian? Okay. And then like before, I'm just going back and going through the same holes again. Basically, we're getting doubles of everything. Okay, that is what you are coming up with at the end. So, voila, there we go. All right, so now what do we do? We do this. And this is the part which made me go to the store an extra time. Because I was trying to use those, and it is literally impossible with the size rings that I'm using to get through the little holes that I'm trying to get through. So, what do I do? I do something else. Actually, I've got to open all these rings up real quick. Okay. Continuing on. Great. Okay. So... I'm going to show this to you after I do it because it's a huge pain. Okay, it's not that big a pain with the size rings that I got. So technically these are the same size rings as these other little gold ones. But part of the reason I find them kind of handy for this spot is because the wire is much thinner. And while that makes the wire more, you know, less strong, you know, it's also this is not where the strength has to be in this so so that's okay it's not great but it's okay um, and also it doesn't just doesn't fit at all if I try it with the larger rings I have tried multiple times and failed just just miserably and this is why I'm using my oh come on dude that's Horrible closure. You can do it. There we go. Okay. So, you can see what I did right there. It goes through. Can you see what I did? So, it goes through that little spot right there on either side. And I know it seems like a lot of extra trouble. I mean, why not just put it in the middle right there? I actually did that on one of mine. So, this is the difference. Where is it? There it is. No, that's not it. There it is. So on this one that I did, I only got through the middle. And you can see that it still looks interesting. It's kind of fun and everything. It doesn't have the little points that the other one has. So then you've got like this one, and you got these little point things on either. And actually, let me do the one that's actually comparative. Oh my gosh, I got so much junk. Okay, so this one has the little point things. So it sort of just depends what you're looking for. I kind of like the little point things. And that's what putting little silver ones in those little corner holes will do. There's just, I mean, there's so many options. <laughs> so, you know, let yourself play around with it a little. The closer you get to the end, the more of a pain in the butt these things are. Because the tighter everything gets. And it's even harder when you're working with the four pedal one. With the four pedal one, there's a point where it gets to be almost impossible. It's super fun. 
Okay, that one's closed too much. Also, this little guy, and part of the reason I like this little wimpier one is because it's, uh, uh, it actually, well, it opens further, the wire's skinnier, you know, yada yada. It's also, however, why I'm using the, uh, the super needle nose pliers, because when you're working, you're having to get in between a bunch of other wires and stuff. Much easier than using your jump ring pliers. Because imagine I'm, I've done that on this and it's like, how do I get the little wire? I love those jumping pliers, but this is not the application for them. So you see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm flipping them up on either side of the center ring right there. I mean, you probably already noticed that, but I thought I didn't point it out the first time. So might as well point it out again. Ah, okay, this is why. My pliers. Okay, let's just do that side. That side seems to want to go first. There. Actually, I <laughs> got one entirely finished. Almost all the way finished. I'm looking and I'm like, why is this not working? Why is this just weird? And I realized I had one of the wires looped around the wrong thing. And I was like, seriously, I already finished this. And I had to go and I had to fix it while it was finished. This is the point to be fixing things and tweaking things. You do not want to be fixing and tweaking stuff on a finished item when everything is already bound together. Once again, my camera angle is abysmal. There you go. Moving along. Okay, there we go. A lot of this stuff will kind of, is kind of adjustable. Like the key thing is just to fit the puzzle together. Um, and then once you got it together, you can you know, work stuff around, that sort of thing. Although, like I said, finishing is also key. You do not want to poorly connect these little rings because you will not be able to fix that later. Like, it will be a huge pain. You basically almost have to take it apart and put it back together to fix that stuff once everything is connected. Okay. See, that's not something I would have been able to do with the jump ring pliers. No, it's not. Sorry. I've been talking to my dogs a lot lately. Baby talk. Okay. So, and this is the reason we left the two little side rings on. Because these are going to go down to the bottom right here. And then you curve the whole thing around. And you see what those little two do? They slide down to the bottom. And the reason I took off that side one... Ah, come on, dude. Okay, like I said a minute ago, sometimes you gotta encourage these. If there is a point where it just gets tight because that's what it does. Come on, dude. I'm just making sure I got everything around the right things and everything in its place. Whatever. Okay. Alright, here we go. So then we go like this, see what it does, a little circle, and then I'm going to slide these two around right here, that way you're not trying to work them on when it's in place. And then, also a fun part, you're going to put, here we go, you're going to put jump rings through there, which I should have already had open. And I didn't. So I gotta open two more jump rings real fast. Okay. Pretty far. Especially when you're working with this uh, tight a weave. You want all of the flexibility you can get. Okay. So, okay, that was actually much easier. So what I'm doing is I'm putting them just like I did on the other ones. I'm kind of connecting these two. I don't know if you see how I'm just sort of... Uh, 
Oh, don't bend. Don't bend. It's just because I'm not using the right pair of pliers. But, oops. And I woggled you again. Sorry, I'm not very good at the camera stuff. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over. And I get that one in there. Okay. There's that. Flip these like this. Oh, actually, not quite yet. So now I need this one right here because I got to connect these two together. Otherwise, it's just sort of hanging out there. And why would it be hanging out there? It's got no purpose, no reason to live as a wire in that state. Nope, nope, that one's too skinny. Let's keep the one that's a little bit wider open. Much easier. And I know it seems like it's a pain to do this at this point, but all that other stuff would have been slightly more complicated if I have already connected them. I have already? If I had already connected them, oh my gosh. Present tense, past tense, where are you? There we go. So, got that in there. Actually, this time I am going to use my jump ring connector because I want everything holding steady. Okay, now I'm going to go over that one. And I'm just going to put in my last two points which is a huge annoyance. No, it's not. That was easy. Wow. Okay. Usually it's much more annoying. Don't ask me why it's not this time. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So... There we go. Come on, dude. All the way through. Yep. Okay. And there we are. Another little flower. They're so cute. Yeah. So. So these are. You can see how they're kind of, uh, they kind of multiply, and then they're like everywhere. You can't stop making them. Oh, uh, the material that I use, it's pretty much, I'm just using the jewelry shop jump rings for all this stuff. Four size jump rings. So, it's got a little bit of an investment. Actually, these are not that expensive, but, uh, it's an investment in time and space to have them at all in that variety. Never mind, I'm just babbling. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for watching, and if you like my channel, please subscribe, and um, see you next time. Bye.